Welcome back guys. So we are going to be talking about the three major components of an RV and that's going to be your freshwater system, your electrical system, and then your tanks. This is going to be kind of a, a list as far as I'm concerned of the best products, the things that I have seen work the best and give you the best results regardless if you're full-time, part-time, just ways to improve your RV experience. Without further ado, let's get into this. So one of the first things I want to point out for your freshwater system is this Blue Tech filter. This thing goes down to 0.2 microns. It is a three-stage filter. I leave it mounted up here. It stays here. It uses these super heavy-duty stainless steel quick connects. So it connects to the RV in no time flat. This goes to the side of the RV. This goes to you know wherever your your spigot is. But this filter has been incredible. I'll include some footage. We took this to you know Baja, Mexico, and we drank water. Some questionable water, to say the least. We filtered out of these dirty 55 gallon drums out of the back of a destroyed pickup truck in Mexico and didn't die. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna count that as a win. I also doubled this up, which I will show you inside, to an Acuva filter. The reason we like using both is this filters everything in the house, but yeah, you know, when we use this to fill our tanks, you still end up with that plasticky tank taste, which obviously nobody enjoys. So the Acuva has a carbon filter, and then it also goes through another UV treatment, which we obviously utilize for our drinking water. That was really only a concern when we were in Mexico, but even in the States, I mean, safe drinking water is really, really nice. So this is a great investment. So wire is water so important in an RV and really, really filtered water because plenty of people get by with the cheap little Camco blue filters and say that nothing's wrong. My absolute number one reason isn't viruses or bacteria or getting stomach bugs. It's, uh, it's my wife. She really, really enjoys her hair and hair products and everything else. And one of the big things to that is good filtered water that's not loading her hair full of minerals, I guess. I don't know anything about that. All I know is that she approves. So that means I approve and it's on this video. <laughs> All jokes aside, filtering the water in the entire house is nice. It keeps your plumbing nicer. It keeps your fixtures nicer. You don't have the, the mineral buildup on everything. Uh, the one thing we actually are adding to this system, we just don't have it yet, is a softener. So Blue Tech actually has, it's, it's way smaller than the, the other ones that you see out there. I'm actually gonna be able to move that filter over a little bit and I'm gonna be able to mount everything on that front tongue. So we will have softened filtered water, which then I think I'm really gonna get some bonus points. Other great thing I love about having filtered water is I'm kind of a clean freak. I enjoy washing my truck, the Airstream, more than I think most. So I run you know, filtered water through my pressure washer to be able to wash the truck, wash the RV, and it makes a huge difference. It lessens water spots dramatically. That's why I'm really excited about having the water softener because that should get the rest of the minerals out and really make it to where it's almost a spot free rinse. So it just makes my drying process much, much easier. The other side of water, especially with boondocking and mooch docking, is consumption. So there's two parts to that. There's how much water do you have to use if you're pulling off of your fresh water tank? And then the other half is how much tank capacity do I have to store it until I can get rid of it? So currently we are parked in Lindsay's sister's driveway, mooch docking. This is where a lot of these components that we're gonna be talking about today kind of really line up and it's not the best because we're out boondocking on epic beaches like we have but they play vital roles when you're at a family member's house that doesn't have any ability to connect an RV. They don't have sewer here as far as like an easy connection point. They don't have any outlets that are, you know, 30 or 50 amps. This is again, a very large part of why a lot of these systems work really, really well, even if you're not planning on going and sleeping, you know, two weeks out in the wilderness, but it gives you the ability to stay at friends and families for extended times and makes that part way easier. So to help with water consumption, you have a couple things that you can do. Obviously you monitor your usage on your faucets, your shower heads, use low water volume 
fixtures. The other thing that are great on shower heads are on-off valves. Soap yourself up, shut the water off really easy, do your cleaning and then rinse off. And again, you're minimizing that water usage. So one of the things that we really, really love with that is our Oxygenix shower head. It's great water pressure. It has multiple levels of different types of spray. So it's one of those small things that gives you options that just really, really improve the experience for everybody. And again, you're consuming less water at the same time. So it's, it's a win across the books. Plus, it's not expensive. Another big point with your water system is how you heat it. Certain heaters are better than others when it comes to boondocking and mooch docking. Tankless, in my opinion, is one of the best just because you never have to worry about, you know, heating it up or it's just when you need it. So you're not burning propane constantly to keep it hot. So currently, but we have the Fugatti, which is super cheap. I actually bought this off of Amazon because it was the only thing I could get in time while we were building this out. And I was like, well, we'll run it for a little bit and then we'll replace it because I was honestly figuring that it was gonna be junk. This thing is a year old. We have zero complaints. The thermostat inside works really, really well. And it honestly does really good. We had the Lippert and the Outback. So that's kind of what we're comparing it against. And I can't tell the difference. The price point, these things are like half the price. So at this point, I can I can definitely recommend it. It's again, available on Amazon, so it's easy to get, easy to return. I'm going cheap is good, and I'm good with that. Another great thing to use when you're mooch docking is a macerator pump. Currently, we're in my sister-in-law's driveway. She has no official hookups, but she does have a clean out within her garage that goes to the sanitary sewer. It's giving me the ability to hook up this macerator pump. It goes to that drain. I turn it on, drain our tanks. We're good to go. Little backstory. Before I got into the RV space, I was actually in wastewater for about 15 years. Unfortunately, I hate to admit, I know my crap. So the last thing that I wanna recommend for your tanks and preventative maintenance, tank treatment. One of the ones that I will recommend is Liquefied. It's from Matt, from Matt's RV Reviews. I think everybody kind of knows that guy at this point in time. He's, he's funny, he's goofy, and honestly, makes a good product. It's no frills, it's bacteria-based tank treatment. I personally don't have a black tank. What I did with some of this was I actually gave it to customers that have black tanks and I wanted them to report back to me. So far, everybody's been thrilled with it. I have been using this to treat my gray tank just because again, it, you know, gray tanks stink. I mean, anybody that lives in one knows that just because like the food scraps that go down the sink, they get, they get gross smelling. Treating those tanks is also great. And within my application, this has worked amazing. This is a great product. Would definitely recommend it. This is one of those things that's convenient. So there's two things here. I hate pulling my 50 amp cord out to then adapt it down to a 110 outlet. There's this adapter, which is incredible. It obviously goes right into my 50 amp. They also make a 30 amp version of this. And what this gives me the ability to do is plug it into a standard extension cord. So no lugging that huge cord out for absolutely no reason. This gives you that ability. It takes up no space and is much better. The other great use of this is with a generator. Anybody who knows trying to plug a generator into one of those monster cables is a joke when you're running the adapters and stuff like that with it staying plugged in. So again, this, you're just plugging in a standard cord. So it it's just way, way easier, less to move around, less to fumble with. And it's been, uh, it's been wonderful. Another thing going along with this that is, in my opinion, essential is a surge protector. So you have ones that can plug in outside, and then you also have ones that are hardwired. We have ours hardwired inside, so it's just one less thing for me to have to move around. It is a Hughes Autoformer Power Watchdog. You can get it in 50 and 30 amp, and what it gives you the ability to do is it monitors the incoming voltage. Most people don't realize majority of surge protectors only protect against that. It only protects against the surge. So if your voltage drops down to say, you know, 105 to 110 volts, it doesn't care. Now, the reason that you should care is when that voltage drops, technically the amperage goes up and that's what creates all that heat. 
and heat, well, we've all seen the melted cords, we've all seen the burn cords, and that is a direct connection to a low voltage. And that is probably the most common problem that I see in just about every RV park is low voltage, especially in the middle of summer when people are running ACs, it's a genuine problem. Now that watchdog, again, it monitors that, and if it gets to a certain point, it kills your power. It cuts it off because it's like, nope, this isn't safe and you know you can set it up with bluetooth and through your phone where you get an alert another thing i want to point out with the electrical system that is really really beneficial regardless if you're running a solar setup or running a smaller generator is ooh, let me get to focus a soft start in your ac the soft starts i've been running for about the last year and a half with everything i've been doing for installs are the spartan soft starts you can get those through inverters r us they're so simple to install. They actually install between the compressor and the main board. So it's three wires that give you a simple color code for you know whichever brand AC you have. So they take about five minutes to put in and they just work. With solar, the, the big thing I wanna point out, I don't wanna necessarily say that you have to have it because it is definitely just a really, really nice accessory. Solar is one of those things that you really need to evaluate how you're gonna travel, where you're gonna travel, and how long you'll be in those areas. Systems like this, you know, the starting point is anywhere from twelve to $15,000. It's not a cheap investment, it's extremely expensive, and it's not for everybody. Other than doing one of these type of systems, the other ones that I, I recommend, and honestly, probably fit 90% of people, are running like the EcoFlow systems. They have a bunch of different sizes. So again, you're gonna to have to kind of do a little bit of research on your own as far as what you wanna power, how long. They're an amazing system. They cost a lot less and it kind of gets you about 80% of what something like this does and you can install it yourself. There's no permanent installation. It just plugs in and, and that's it. Just know that when I say solar system or lithium setup, you don't have to have one that Victron components with the solar panels on the roof. You could very easily get like an EcoFlow Delta or Delta Two. They, um, you know, ground foldable solar panels, and that could honestly be what is more than enough for you to get to be able to do, you know, Harvest Host or Boondockers Welcome or you know, a night in a Cracker Barrel. Again, I'll leave some links down below, but don't get pushed into a solar system like this unless you absolutely have to feel free to reach out to me. I do solar installations. I tell most people I'm the worst salesman when it comes down to it because I want you to get what's going to work the best for you at the most affordable range. Feel free to reach out, email, call, text, and I will, I will kind of help determine if you need this or if one of those other systems will be sufficient for you. Thanks again for checking out the videos, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. I will leave links for everything in the description. Until next time, guys, keep dreaming.